Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Call Our Crimes a Work of Art. This will be Part 14, Chapters 30 and 31. Chapter 30 Monoma Monoma yawns as he steps into the alleyways again. Honestly, they're not hard to traverse. They just take a lot of time. Luckily, he snagged Conjuration's quirk on his way out of base and paladins on the purple boy's way back into base with Rogue. He knows Bard has an important mission later today, and that he's on standby while the others do their own mission. He's not upset. He knows it's because he technically has a few objectives to try and fill out here. The favors, which he's more than halfway done with. Hopefully selling an illegal firearm, and paying for information, which he's about to do. All on top of meeting with Hercules Mulligan, but back to the purchasing information. The CD individual he's talking to doesn't seem like the most useful informant, but he's cheap and they don't really need more information. They have all they need, but for the objective, he's willing to put up with it. He hands over the cash he has made with Momo's quirk, and the man quickly tells him about how women have been complaining about some hero abusing his position. Well then, that's quite the interesting bit of information. He thanks the guy and goes looking for a woman he had met yesterday. Her apartment is horrible, if livable, and she's barely making ends meet. He'd seen her yesterday and saw her groceries, or lack thereof so he got Rogue's permission to give her some food. Once that's dropped off, he finds a robber and offers him a weapon. He gives the money from that sale to the woman as well, counting as their last favor. Now all that's left is to meet with their spy on the inside. Njiri is sitting in the park when he arrives, eating her lunch. So, anything to report? Not really. A lot of the girls keep complaining about one of the boys, a few civilians, too, but Kirishima keeps talking to him and believing him when he says he won't do it anymore. I've heard a little about that lately. I... Is there something you can do? I... Don't feel safe with him there with me, or the other women. Like? Anything. Get him fired, captured, killed. I don't know, just away from us. I'm sure that can be arranged. It'd cost you. How much? We have a bit of a distasteful task that we will have trouble performing. If we do this, you do this task, no questions asked. Fine. Monoma leaves the conversation happy. Who knew he could get blackmail for hire? Another objective out of the way. He has a brief conference call with Rogue and Bard to plan out a few quick things while Hatsume hacks a few things for them, and then returns to base for his much-earned nap. Hizashi Hizashi is so excited. It's his first real mission since spying on the heroes as they came in. But what's better is it involves acting. He hasn't had to use his quirk once, just like Rogue said. He's so excited that he barely manages to duck back into the grocery produce stand as Ashido and Froppy walk by on patrol. He's in disguise, obviously, but he knows people oftentimes don't recognize him even if he just takes his hair down and wears normal clothes. But Shota's sweater is so comfy and it smells like him that he had to wear it today. So he's going with a professor sort of look. Once they're past, he buys an apple and eats it on the way to his meeting with two important people. One is the commissioner of the police department, and the other is the deputy commissioner. They're still feeling the effects of Shadow Monk and Artificer's work yesterday. They were next to the two officials who had been killed. Poor boys. He has English with some of them. He sees the two arrive and startle for a moment trying to place him. But they won't. Welcome. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me. Of course, it's not every day that we receive a call directly to our homes telling us about evidence to a crime. Of course not. But due to the nature of this situation, I thought it best to go to the top. Of course. You see, I have it on good authority that a certain hero in our city has been harassing both his female co-workers and civilians, going so far as to abuse his authority. You want us to go after a hero? The deputy commissioner asks, eating his food. Why not? That's your job. To seek out and stop villains, right? I'm sorry, but we can't take the word of... Photographs of him doing so. Video of him as well. As well as written accounts from a few victims. He hands the file of documents over. His glove almost snagging on it. Be that as it may. Oh, and if you refuse to look into this, I'll expose this evidence from your lawyer's house. A mistress, really. Having an affair is so cliché, don't you think? He says, looking at the commissioner. The man is wide-eyed. Hisashi drops their evidence of that tidbit on top of the harassment case file. 
Do you really think I'm going to sit here and let you blackmail the police department? The deputy demands. Yes, Izaji says, showing him the mirror of his compact. That shows his black tongue. Poison is amazing. As you can see, I'm very serious about this. I trust you won't disappoint. N no, sir. Izashi nods and heads off to the door, glad they could understand each other. Izuku. Okay, everyone, it's time to go, he says, staring up at the office building. Time to get serious. A chorus of agreement sounds from around him. He smiles. Time to go. He gives the signal to go. Chapter 31. Izuku. Izuku takes a breath as he double-checks that everyone that's here is supposed to be here. Rogue! Bar just got back from his mission. He's waiting on standby with Mimic and Paladin, should you need reinforcements, Artificer says. Copy, Artificer. We're arriving on location now. He takes a breath and clicks the earpiece on again. Team, now you see me. Are you in position? Yes, sir. All right, we go in five. Remember, timing is key here. We know, Rogue. Spore Druid, remember, get them all once we enter. One, two, three, four, five, go. The group of students rush the bank. It's the same bank they robbed the other day, but this time, they're not after money. Izuka watches as Spore Druid releases her sleeping spores into the air. Awaze comes and welds the door shut, and then metal sheets from Momo over the windows and glass. He can see a few people still moving, and one in particular reaching for the silent alarm. Izuka steps in his way. No, sorry, but we can't invite the guests of honor quite yet, he says, and when the man finally passed out, he drags him away right over to the rest of the civilians. Right up against the door. That should take care of Katan and Kirishima and Tetsutetsu. They won't come crashing in, hopefully. He sets up a few more things before he finally presses the button. Hopefully, they'll be able to get the full five objectives that they're shooting for. Mimic, you initiated Hercules Mulligan's exchange, correct? Yeah, boss. Good. Artificer, it's time for phase two. On it! It's time to start the show. Uraka. Uraka is just walking into the break room in the agency when she spots Nijiri at the coffee pot. Nijiri? Oh, hey, Uraraka. Sorry, I'm stealing some coffee. The machine downstairs isn't working for some reason, and I didn't want to bother anyone about a new one, Najiri says. Oh, of course. Don't worry about it. It's just coffee. Some of us can't even drink it, she says. Thanks, Uraraka, she says. No problem. You can come up for more any time, she says and leaves Najiri to get her own coffee. Najiri. Najiri smiles and pours the contents of the vial into the coffee pot. She doesn't particularly want to do this next part, but she has to. She pours herself a cup and quickly gulps it down. It should be a while before the symptoms start to show. Izuku He wasn't sure who Kirishima would send. Kachan would be a good choice, if the blonde wasn't a loose cannon in every sense of the word. Definitely not the right choice for a hostage negotiation. Nor would Tetsutetsu be a good choice either. Manga wouldn't work well. Well, he would be good, but Manga decided to sit out the exercise. Something about fighting friends to this degree didn't sit right with the other boy. That's fine. One less person for the heroes. Of course, they sent Mina. She's one of the most social of Class 1A, and... Oh, they sent Ida, Sue, and Sero for capture, and... Oh, Cementos for containment. How nice. But there was one hero he was hoping would come, otherwise a few of their objectives will be impossible to get. Shadow Monk? So far, the plan is to distract you with the front, while Hagakure and Mineta sneak in the back. Her to give intel, and Mineta to restrain you all. Good. His target is here. Team Cartrunk, are you there? We're here, comes Elder Tonight's voice. Good. Be ready with your part of the plan. We will be. I must say, the street looks nicer than it did the night I made the trash storm. The line cuts off, which signals they're done talking, and he moves into position. Remember the plan, he says. Yes, boss, they say just as the phone in the bank rings. He lets it ring a few more times before finally picking it up. Hello? Hi, I would like to talk to whoever's in charge, Mina's voice comes over the line. Sorry, the boss isn't here today. Maybe try another day. The heroes don't need to know he's here, because then Katan will come, and he doesn't want that, not yet. He won't play with Katan till day five 
when he collects the rest of his objectives. Izuka smiles a little. It's all been going according to plan thus far. But he is not going to get cocky. Oh, that's a shame. Who am I speaking with? Does it matter? Well, yeah. I can't talk to say Todoroki the same way I would talk to Momo, Mina says. Do I sound like Todoroki or Momo? Well, no, you're changing your voice, though, so it could be one of them. She's honestly a good distraction, adept at talking about everything and nothing at the same time. Team Car Trunk is making their move, Momo signs to him, and he nods. How about we speed this up? Our boss wants a million dollars. You have one hour before we start killing hostages. Chop, chop, heroes, he says and hangs up. Janasi, be ready to go as soon as Car Trunk goes. Shoto nods. Shadow Monk? They're getting into position to provide support once the infiltration team enters the building. Cementos is building a perimeter. He'll be too far away to help once you infiltrate. And Cero? He had the unfortunate event of landing on the same roof I'm on. I took him out. Eldritch Knight? We are ready on three. Izuku nods. One. Two. Three. He doesn't need the comms to hear the screaming when Team Car Trunk makes their move. And neither does Shoto. Before the scream is finished, Ice shoots under the door and out over the sidewalk, leeching over the heroes in front of the building. He sees the ice and cold immediately take effect on Sue, the girl passing out. Ida is pretty much stuck, and Mina is trying to get out of the ice with her acid. Who taught the invisible girl to fight? She gave me a concussion before I was able to shoot her, comes Paladin's angry voice over the comms. Any other injuries? Just minor ones, I think. I am bleeding, though. It's fine. I have a plan in place for injuries, he says. He steps outside, and before Mina can call in backup, he shoots her in the head and takes her calm. He does the same for Ida, but leaves him alive. He considers Sue carefully before shrugging and shooting the sleeping girl. He's seen Sue after hibernation. She's always hungry and anxious. No reason to force her to deal with that in the rest of the game as well. Then he steps back inside. Car trunk. Status? Already on our way out of here. Team, now you see me. Ready when you are, boss. Izuku nods. All right, everyone. In the vault. It's time to go, he says and puts on one of the hero comms. He can hear Kirishima and Katan ranting in the background. He smirks. Perfect. He waits till he's the last one, then says, Come play, Katan. Not wanting to listen to the blonde's ranting, he drops both hero comms and crushes them under his boot. Artificer. Phase three. On it, boss she says, and he steps into the vault, closing it behind him. Hiroshima. Bakugo, slow down. Don't go into this with a hot head. It isn't manly. Shut up, shitty hair. That stupid Deku is playing games. I'm going to remind him that this isn't a game, Bakugo shouts. We need a plan. I have a plan. I'm going to bust in there and kill Deku. Then the stupid game will be over. Hiroshima sighs as he runs after Bakugo, knowing he won't get through to the boy. He watches as the bank comes into view, and Bakugo forces himself faster. He watches the boy blast past the still-stuck Ida and the two frozen corpses of their teammates, and then follows Bakugo through the hole in the door the blonde made. He doesn't see anything. Where are the criminals? Where are the civilians? Ida had said something about a time limit in killing hostages. Where is everyone? Kirishima asks. I don't know, shitty hair I. Bakugo stops talking as he turns around to look at Kirishima. His face is unreadable as he stares at something behind him. With a sinking feeling, he turns to look. Buried under rubble are several civilian bots crushed, and chalk outlines of where the human ones were placed. At least the human civilians were moved away from where they would likely have been hurt or injured, but that chalk must mean that that was their official location. Oh God, that's twenty bodies. Bakugo. Both boys are in shock, so it's understandable that neither notices the tiny red dot blinking on the security camera that had once been blank. Izuku. Perfect, Izuku says, turning away from the computer screen. You know what to do with this, right, Artificer? Of course I do, Rogue. Good. He leaves her to her task and heads to where the others are. They made it back to the base completely fine, and the others are resting up from that last mission. Paladin is wincing as Mike cleans the wound on his face. Is he okay? Izuku asks. He might have a small fracture. I'm doing the best I can without an x-ray machine, Mike says. You're doing wonderful, Mr. Mike. I'm fine, boss. Don't worry about me. 
Hitoshi says. Don't worry. I have a plan that will help you with your injury. Do you think you can make it to tomorrow? Yeah. The pain relievers are working wonders, the purple boy says. Okay, don't worry. You'll be right as rain tomorrow. Good. Wouldn't want to miss our big moment, Hitoshi says. Never. But everyone gets some rest. The only people needed for this next mission are me, Bard, and Shadow Monk, with Paladin on standby as a last option. Aye, aye, boss, they all chorus. Let phase four of this plan begin. All right, listeners, this concludes chapter 31 of Call Our Crimes a Work of Art. Chapter 32 will be up next. Hope you all are still enjoying this fic, eager to hear your thoughts and reactions, and as always, thank you so much for listening.